Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, so, just want to give you guys... Um, just want to tell you guys what happened to me uh, a couple of days ago with my car and how I got it fixed. So, basically, I was at the park. Um, the cars were fine all day. Um, and uh, I parked it, went for a jog for about an hour came back uh, all red, already all set to go back home and then when I try to start it it would crank but it wouldn't start so it, it crank up each and every time I would try to turn the car on it would crank but it wouldn't start so basically um, I thought originally I thought it might have been the battery that was causing it <sighs> But, um, I remember I changed the battery up about six months ago, um, got the battery from Walmart, it was one of these value brand batteries, and um, I, you know what, I, I, I assumed that it was the battery, I, I was hoping it was the battery because that was one of the cheaper fixes, but um, regardless, um, I was kind of on the fence about it because the crank was very strong. Normally, it was a weak battery or a bad battery or a dead battery. Uh, that would be um, a, a kind of like a slow crank, a low crank, a slow crank, uh, or it wouldn't start off. So I was thinking, turn on the headlights, went out, checked up beams, the headlights to see whether they were strong or not just to give me um, you know just to see where the batteries where the batteries were at so I went out checked the headlights the headlights were very very strong and at that point I I, I was thinking it probably wasn't a battery so I popped the hood and and looked at the battery just to see because that th I thought that was the main reason for it uh, terminals were um, a little bit corroded and um, I remember last time I really didn't clean the terminals at all there was a little bit of debris on the inside whitish stuff and um, I pretty much had a can of coke in the car poured it on the terminals had it fizz up oxidized and uh, took some napkins to clean it and uh, popped it back in they weren't uh, loose, but they went super tight as far as the terminal is concerned. I was able to pop them out, pop them in, and uh, I was hoping that would resolve the issue. Uh, went back, try to start it. It would crank again. It wouldn't start. At that point, I was pretty sure it probably was not the battery, but seeing as how I had a, uh, a booster pack on me that I bought six months ago when I had that issue with the battery um, and I haven't used it since it's a it was about 80% charged popped it on just want to just get the battery out of the way as far as it being the the cause of it um, I was, was hoping it would crank um, it was hoping it would it would turn over it did the same thing it crank it wouldn't turn over so at that point, I ruled out the battery being the cause of it. Um, and, uh, you know, while I, I had the hood up, I was looking at the negative connection, which is the ground, which is the main ground wire. I uh, looked at that. If you guys don't know what the ground wire is, it pretty much completes the circuit. All right. And that the main ground wire, the main ground wire is pretty much the negative cable. And that, that negative cable normally is pretty much connected to the frame of uh, the car so I checked that out and uh, didn't look like it was that bad it had some rust on it but um, you know I didn't think it was that bad everything was connected well and at that point I, I pretty much ruled out the ground wire I ruled out the battery I ruled out the alternator seeing as how um, you know, I didn't think it was the alternator to begin with because normally um, it was alternator, a bad alternator. Um, you know, the, the car would have died out on the road while the engine was uh, on. 
but um, that wasn't the case. But regardless, regardless, when I had the battery pack on, if it was the alternator, you know, the car the car would start up and then it would die out immediately when I took the power pack off. But that's uh, I'm going way off on that right now. I didn't think it was the alternator. Normally, the alternator would not be causing some situation like this unless the battery was very very low and then you'd have a slow crank and all that stuff. But crew out the alternator. All right. So basically, after that, I'm like, okay, it could be a bunch of other things. It's possible that it could be a bunch of other things. But then I realized there was no check engine light at all on... There's no check engine light at all on the dash. And I haven't had a check engine light in a long while on this car. I haven't had a check engine light in a long, long while on this car. And so basically, at that point, I could pretty much rule out a bunch of other stuff that actually had a sensor connected to it whether it be the mass airflow sensor would that you know that would that could cause it if if if, if that was if there was an issue with that throttle position sensor camshaft crankshaft um, a whole bunch of stuff that has a sensor uh, connected to it I could pretty much rule that out but here's what I did I have a $20 OBD2 uh, reader um, that I keep around in the car, uh, and I've had it for a while. Um, okay, so in this situation, I was thinking, let's let's you know analyze this. Let's pretty much uh, deduct what we need to deduct as far as you know causes of this, deductive reason as far as the causes of this. I'm like, you know, there's a chance it might be the car's computer having issues for whatever reason. It's not connecting with the car itself. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I got to rule that out. So I put the OBD2. And I know the OBD2 is not going to, normally not going to tell me without a check engine light, you know, you know, normally it's not going to read anything. Well, it's going to analyze everything and it's going to put out readout, but it's not going to tell you, you know. Anyway, anyway, I put in the OBD2 and uh, it scanned all the way through, gave me a readout at that point. When it gave me a readout, I knew that there was no issues with any kind of communication issue with the car's uh, ECU, the car's computer, um, the car's computer to to the car itself, and I, and obviously it came up with uh, there was no um, there's no codes whatsoever. Um, everything looked good, so so just from that, just from doing that, I could rule out. The car's computer being the issue, I could rule out any single sensor that any every single sensor that may, um, you know, that may be causing this. I could any, anything that had a sensor that could be causing it um, that 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 the OBD2 scanner could read. I could rule all of those things out. Rule all those things out. So at that point, I was stuck with a couple of things. Uh, one of those things could be um, either a fuse, a relay, fuel pump, fuel pump filter, um, maybe the ignition uh, switch, maybe the ignition cylinder. But here's the thing. All right. Okay. So I got to the fuse box. Okay. We're going down the list of things to look for. I go down to the, I, I, I get to the fuse box and checked out all the fuses to make sure there were no blown fuse. Um, I did not have a fuse tester on me. So I looked, I try to smell to see whether there was any kind of smell, any kind of burnt fuse, burnt smell, whatever. There was nothing like that. So um, I, 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 I could kind of root all of that out. Not that, not that, you know. I mean, I, I, it's possible that, you know, it's, it, there's a blown fuse and I wasn't able to spot it. But normally you, you would use this, a fuse tester for that. So basically, we're left with um, uh, relays. Relays and uh, the fuel pump uh, as major failures that could be causing this issue. So I, I was looking, um, you know, before I even went there, um, I forgot to say that another test I did was... Um, originally, I thought it might be um, maybe a fuel pump issue or something like that. So what I did was, um, I, I I sat in my car, had the had the car all the way off, and what I was trying to do was I was trying to 
uh, trying to hear the fuel pump going off, the fuel pump priming. All right, so I uh, normally the best way to do that is if you had another person right next to where the fuel cap is, you take the fuel cap off where you put gas in, and you would listen while somebody turns the car to the on position. Now, I didn't have, it was just me, so I, I sat in my car with everything off, Turn it to the on position. Try to see. Try to hear. Uh, listen for a for some kind of whizzing sound, motorized whizzing sound, um, and uh, see if I could pick anything up. I wasn't able to pick anything up either way, whether there was a sound or not. So at that point, um, uh, I couldn't figure out exactly whether it was the fuel pump that was that was the issue. So. Obviously, got to the, to, to, to the relays and, and uh, you know, didn't notice anything different with the relays. So, um, I actually, you know, just to test out the relay to see whether the, the relay might, might have had uh, issues or something like that. I actually swapped another relay for that relay. I swapped it, you know. So, I when I swapped it, um, got back in the car, turned on, boom. When you know it... It actually cranked, it, it it turned over. So at that point, I could, you know, rule out everything else because that was the issue that was keeping the car from from turning over. At that point, I knew it was the relay. All right? If it, if, if it didn't turn over, <coughs> um, it might have been something else, probably the fuel pump or whatever. It could be, you know, probably the fuel pump. But... Uh, Anyway, just to just to tell you how I fixed it, um, you know, went obviously went to AutoZone, got another relay, um, swap out, swapped it out, and uh, haven't had an issue, haven't had a, a crank no start issue since. It turns over just fine, and um, you know, ever, ever since that happened a couple of days ago, uh, car's been driving fine. It's been turning over fine. It's been cranking over fine. Had no issues with it. So if you guys are in this situation, um, you know, you guys want to know, try to figure out what's causing that situation, what you guys, sh you know, you know, just go down the list of what I went through um, on this video as far as just eliminating stuff that be could be causing it. There's a good chance that, you know, your problem could be caused by one of those, um, you know, one of those things. But um, in any case, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any comments, please leave a comment in the comment section. Uh, please subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Hope this has helped you guys out. All right, guys. Take care.